All right, so this is the video for section 9.4, the tangent ratio. And this section is the first of our trigonometric um, ratio sections. Um, you'll see also the 9.5, we'll get into two other um, trig ratios. Um, but the one in 9.4 that you'll see, um, I've made you know little annotations right here. Um, this one's for 9.4, so you'll want to take note of the tangent ratio for 9.4, and then when we get to 9.5, you'll want to take note of sine and cosine. So we're just going to do 9.4 uh, today. Um, a trig ratios, um, as it says um, right there with the highlight, is a ratio of lengths of two sides and a right triangle. So we're continuing with our um, right triangles, studying those um, throughout this chapter. And the tangent ratio is specifically focusing on the legs of a right triangle, as you'll notice right here. So when we write the tangent ratio, the tangent is always going to be the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Um, so you'll notice in this example over here that if you were to do the tangent of angle A, which is this angle right here, that would be the opposite leg, which is right here, over the adjacent. Um, and it'll become a little bit more clear when we see some examples that actually have numbers. Um, but that's, in its most simplest form, what the tangent ratio is. As you're looking at a right triangle and you're saying, what are the ratios, what is the ratio of the opposite leg um, over the adjacent leg. So going through that, we're going to start here with a couple of examples. Um, this one wants us to find the tangent of angle S and the tangent of angle R. So starting with tangent of angle S, you'll see here in blue, um, angle S is this one right here. So if we want the opposite of angle S, that is going to be right here at 80. So that's where we get this 80 right here. And then we're going to put that over the adjacent side, which is 18. So then that would mean that the tangent of angle S is equal to 80 over 18, which is approximately 4.4 repeated. Okay, then if you're doing the tangent of angle R, angle R would be this one right here, the opposite of angle R is going to be angle 18, and the adjacent to angle R is going to be 80. So when you put those over one another, that means that the tangent of R is going to be approximately 0.225. That's where we get that answer there. And it's as simple as that when you're working with tangent ratios. You're just looking at the legs, um, asking yourself what is the opposite um, side length and then what is the adjacent side length and putting those over one another and that would be your tangent of that um, angle. Um, coming down here, you'll get some examples where you don't know one of the side lengths, and it's going to want you to solve for the side length, like in this example right here. It wants you to find the value of x. Well, we can still set it up the same way, but instead of having angle A or angle R or whatever inside of this part right here, now we're going to have the actual degree angle. So in this one, you'll see that the value of x, we're going to have the tangent of 32 degrees, is going to be equal to the opposite, which is 11, over the adjacent, which is x. Um, now that we have this whole equation set up, now we need to solve the equation for x. Well, in order to do that, we're going to need to multiply both sides by x, and that's why you'll see that this x is right here. So we multiplied by x over here um, to bring it over to the other side. And now we have x tangent of 32 is equal to 11. In order to solve for x, we now need to divide everything by the tangent of 32. And that's how we get x equals 11 over the tangent of 32. And then if you put this into your calculator, um, 11 over the tangent of 32 gives you 17.6. And that should not be a degree right there. So the answer would be 17.6 would be this side length right here. Okay. Um, continuing with that trend, if you come down here to number three, 
you'll see that if we want to find the value of x, we can use this angle right here. So we would say that the tangent of 61 is going to be equal to the opposite 22 over adjacent x. And we'll solve the same way. We're going to need to multiply by x on both sides. So we'll have x tangent of 61 is equal to 22. And then when we divide by tangent of 61, divide by tangent of 61, you get that x is equal to 22 divided by the tangent of 61, which is equal to 12.2. So that's going to be our other side length, x. Okay, just a couple other examples. We're going to scroll through section 9.5. Here's some additional examples for 9.4. Um, again, it wants us to find the value of x. Um, we're going to use tangent because we have the opposite and we have the adjacent. So we're going to say that the tangent of 27 has got to be equal to x over 15. Now in order to solve this one, we're going to multiply by 15 on both sides, which will give us 15 tangent of 27 is equal to x. And when we put that into our calculators, let's do that, 15 tangent of 27, you should get the answer is x equals 7.64 as your answer. Okay, now on this next one, um, we're going to do the same thing. Um, we have 37, and this is our opposite, and this is our adjacent. So we're going to do the tangent of 37 degrees is equal to opposite, which is 6, over x, which is our adjacent. Um, we're going to do the solving again. Uh, you'll notice that each time, um, whenever we're multiplying by x and then dividing by the tangent of 37, that essentially this x and this tangent of 37 are switching. So I'm going to kind of skip that step this time. X is going to be equal to 6 over the tangent of 37. Okay. Now, if, you, if that kind of confused you of how I got this switch right here, um, you can go through that extra step of multiplying by x and then dividing by the tangent of 37. Um, but after you do that a couple times, you'll just begin to notice the x and the tangent of 37 just swap places when it's on the bottom. Um, so now I can put 6 divided by the tangent of 37 into my calculator. And you get that the answer is... Seven point nine six. So that would be my side length x right there. Seven point nine six. And you, I mean, you could round that to eight if you wanted to. Okay. Um, this last one, it's saying, what is the tangent of a thirty degree angle in a right triangle? Well, as we found out in section nine point two, is that we have properties of a special of special right triangles. One of those special right triangles is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So if we make, this is a little bit of our shorter side, so over here is going to be 30, over here is going to be 60. Um, now remember across from the 30 degree angle we have x, the hypotenuse is going to be 2x, and then the side across from 60 is going to be x times the square root of 3. So then it's, what is the tangent of a 30 degree angle? We're going to look right here at our 30 degree angle. And we're going to say the tangent of 30 is equal to the opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be x over x times the square root of 3. So now, um, as we work through that, um, we can um, continue to work and solve this for for x, and as we work through that, um, you're going to end up um, getting, let's see, we can, if we rationalize this denominator right here, um, you'll see that this x and this x actually cancel out. They divide out into 1. So you could simplify this to be the tangent of 30 is equal to 
1 over the square root of 3. So you could leave your answer like this, or technically you'll, you'll see them um, fix it to where they multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3, um, because the mathematicians don't really like having square roots in the denominator. So when you multiply by this special version of 1, you end up getting the square root of 3 over 3 as the answer. So if you see an answer in a book um, where you have something like 1 over the square root of 3, and you look in the back and it says square root of 3 over 3, uh, those are actually the same thing. Okay, so if you have a question on what we've done here in 9.4, uh, feel free to post on the um, discussion board or the question and answer board for this week and I will answer that as soon as I see it. Um, you may also email me if you need it, um, but good luck.